Okay, so the Starless Sea. I am 150 pages into it. I mean, no, 150 pages from the end. My thoughts are, I still don't know how I feel about this daggum book. I love the fables and it has this overall really mysterious vibe. What these characters are experiencing within this world is overall so interesting to me. And yet it is Oh my goodness, such a mess as far as, it's just so chaotic. It's so chaotic and I can't tell if it's going to be a good kind of chaotic that wraps up really nicely or if it's gonna be a kind of chaotic like author, did you know what you were doing this entire time? Um, and still Zachary, our main character that we're supposed to be following throughout this entire book is still absolutely personalityless, which is unfortunate because I don't care about him at all and yet I care about this world so much. So I still, I go back and forth. Do I like this book? Do I hate this book? I can't tell. And I think I'm not gonna be able to know until the very last page. I think that's when I'm gonna find out. So I feel so many things. I'm also still currently reading A Crown of Swords, which is book seven in the Wheel of Time series. I am now almost halfway through it. Boom. And well, that's basically halfway, nearly there. And it is, I don't like what Robert Jordan is doing to my lovely Perrin. He's made him extremely boring, but that's all right. We move forward. Um, it's not very interesting, but there's a few interesting moments. That's about all I have to say about that. I also picked up Oliver Twist to balance it out because I can only, I feel so sad saying it, but I can only take so much at a time of Wheel of Time. So I picked up Oliver Twist and Oliver Twist is a really boring start. So maybe not the best book to pick to balance it out, but I do really like Oliver as a character. He's easy to latch on to, which is helpful because this main character is not easy to latch on to. And I don't know, I love some of these characters, but so far they're not a very big focus in this book. So Oliver Twist, I at least have character work here. I have character work here too, I'm just being sassy. Also, I only just today remembered that I was reading The Heart's Invisible Fury, so I don't have an update on that, but I will get back to reading it. I'm just really bad at reading ebooks. I forget that they exist and I do other things. So, The Heart's Invisible Furies, gonna read that too. I, I need to finish, I need to finish two of these books this week. That would make me happy because I usually like to have two books going at once and I currently have four and that's too many, so. Oh, Locke isn't here because he's at the vet right now and I miss him. But in case you missed the community post, he's now an indoor cat. He won the battle against my husband. Maybe. Not maybe. You said the words. We'll see. You said the words. <laughs> Corey loves him. It was, a, it was a hard love to gain, but Corey loves him. the week let's talk about what I've read Starless Sea done and I I have such mixed feelings we've talked about this a bit in the last vlog so I don't want to repeat myself a ton but I I don't know what else to say because the overall feeling of it stayed the same it is so whimsical and mysterious and exciting but also chaotic and so very purple in the writing style. It's just so wordy and description heavy, which is beautiful when we're exploring the world, but sometimes a little bit much for me. The characters are bland, especially Zachari Zachary is totally personalityless. Um, some of the side characters definitely had a lot more to them, but even looking back, I think just their position in the story was very interesting but their personality was still, it was better built up than Zachary, but it still 
wasn't built up very well at all. And the ending, like the last hundred pages were so fun. It was so cool to watch these individual pieces that had no context all come together. And that was a blast. But it also ended on a note where not every loose end was tied up and some things were left up for us to really not know. What I actually liked that ending. I liked, I liked that in the end we got closure on a lot of things, but for a lot of the stories, they're still going on and we don't know how they ended. I thought it was a, I really, I really liked the last hundred page. I really liked the book. I, I don't know. I have such mixed feelings about this book. I recorded a review for it already and it'll either go up tomorrow or you'll never see it because, <laughs> because my, I have so many thoughts, but I don't, I came away from this feeling like I'm really glad I read it and I have an overall really great experience. You can come up here. I think my overall feelings are really positive. I ha I love the world so much and I love the idea of it so much and the execution of the world and the mystery of it was amazing, but the execution of other elements just, just the author just didn't, there, there were certain things that she tried hard on and certain things that she didn't. And that bums me out because I, I want this book to be something that I adore because I love the world that much. I don't know, I have a lot of thoughts. I'm trying to decide if I'll post that review or not. Hi, sweetheart. Locke, by the way, update on Locke. He's back from the vet, obviously. And he now has his, he had his, he had it, he, he was checked for a chip and he got shots and he got fixed and he got his nails clipped. So he's been through the ringer, but he's doing really good. He's just resting a lot. But everybody at the vet said that he had the best temperament and the whole time he was just snuggling up to everybody and giving them love. We have the best cat in the world. I'm so grateful for him. Wheel of Time, book seven. I am 500 pages in. I'm doing well, man, but full disclosure, I did some skimming. I'm not usually a skim reader at all. I really like details of stories, but honestly, book six was really hard to get through. It was, it was so repetitive and boring. Jordan's writing is starting to kill me. Not that he's a bad writer. It's just that he feels the need to remind us of every Thing he's already told us for seven books and so this book is a lot of repeating himself just like book six was with a little bit of story and it just I'm tired of it man so I'm doing a lot of skimming I'm skipping over a lot of things that I already know or that just don't seem important at all and I'm just getting the story which is why I'm reading it so fast and the story itself is really interesting it's just getting to the story is really boring. There's been a lot of really interesting development in it. Um, Rand specifically is a character that I've been really enjoying in this book. Matt has also been pretty interesting in this book. There's been, a, there's been a lot of really interesting stuff happening, but there's also so much that's not interesting at all. So that review will be up at some point. Oliver Twist I've been doing a lot better on. Look at that. Yeah, I'm killing Oliver Twist. I think it's just a really good break from everything else that I was reading because the Starless Sea was so chaotic yet interesting and the Wheel of Time is so boring yet interesting moments and Oliver Twist, uh, I don't know. Charles Dickens is also really, really wordy um, and a lot of unnecessary detail, but I don't know. I guess I just connected with Oliver so much and I might have already said this in my last clip, but having such an amazing world, but lack of character depth in the Starless Sea, this was a really good balance. So it was the one that I kept picking up all throughout the week. But anyway, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a hard, it's hard to read because Oliver is treated so terribly. Um, but it's, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really enjoying going through his life with him, even though it's so hard. And last, just today, I picked up finally Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I have been dying to continue on with my Harry Potter reread. I was just, I was waiting to finish the Starless Sea before I picked up yet another book. So today I picked up Harry Potter. I'm only 50 pages into it, so barely even started, but it feels really good to be back here. It's been, man, I took a long break between five and six and it feels really good to be back. I don't have any thoughts yet because I'm only 50 pages in, but 
I love it. And I'm really, really excited to be reading it again. Popping back in because I forgot to give an update for Hearts of, the Hearts Invisible Furies. Um, so, okay, historical fiction, I still don't know what the purpose of this novel is. I'm 70% into the ebook, um, so I'll for sure finish it, I think, before my wrap up, for sure, I think. Uh, but it's really interesting. Um, I think, I don't know, I'm following this character um, as he just goes through life. I still, I'm 70% into the book and I still don't know what we're doing. I still don't know where this is going or what the purpose is. It's definitely a very character focused novel. Um, I'm following this guy in Ireland in uh, I think the 1940s when it's still illegal to be gay and his whole journey through all that and now um, I'm, in the, I'm in the later part of his life, the latter part of his life, and he's a lot more settled and established and getting his life together a little bit, but I just don't know what we're doing, where we're going, what's happening. It's, it's a really enjoyable book, for lack of a better word. Um, I really love our main character, whose name I have no idea how to pronounce, probably Cyril or something like that. I really like him. He's um, the author is doing a great job at making these characters come alive. I like most of the characters that are coming onto the scene. Um, I find most of Cyril's life very interesting. I have 30% left of this ebook, and I mean, I have no idea. I could potentially love this book. I could potentially really not like it because it's so focused on characters, and I'm just following this guy through his life and. There's not really been any plot yet. I have no idea how I'm gonna feel about this book at the end, but it's been an enjoyable read so far. There are a ton of time jumps throughout the book, which I don't like, but I'm you know, dealing with it and it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll just let you know in my wrap up what my final thoughts are because I really, it's one of those books because it's so character focused and I'm the type of reader that I like to have plot too, not just characters. Um, it's one of those books that I really just, I, I can't know how I'm going to feel about it till the end. I have had so many character focused books this month. It's really funny um, because it's not usually what I gravitate toward, but I can enjoy them and I have enjoyed some of them. Now, that is all for the book reviews of the week. Now we are going to get into, sorry, lock. The unboxings. I don't know how Locke's gonna feel about all this noise that's about to happen. <gasps> oh yeah, this is from, oh my goodness. So this is from my friend Uli. He just finished the Mistborn trilogy and then went on to read these and he asked me if I had read them yet and I told him no because I'm a terrible Sanderson fan. And so he sent me, he sent, oh man, I'm so excited. Wow, I didn't realize it was so thick, but also Brandon Sanderson wrote it, so are we surprised? Thank you so much, Uli. It doesn't come with a note, but I know it's from you. Thank you so much, you're the best. Oh, yay! Hello, Murphy, I hope you and your family are well. I'm a big Agatha Christie fan, so I've sent you my absolute two favorite novels from her in hopes you will enjoy them. I also included a book for Drennan too. Best wishes, Dana. Thank you, Dana. I guess Drennan's book will probably be in another package. Thank you so much. So, and then They Were None is the one that I'm the, mo the most excited about for all the Agatha Christie books, and I haven't read it, but I didn't own it, and now I do. Ah! This is a wonderful gift. I have been wanting to get into Agatha Christie for a while, and I haven't. And now multiple subscribers have sent me Agatha Christie, so I'm set for a minute. It says this shipment completes your order, so. I don't know who this is from. I'm going to go ahead and assume this is from Dana. Oh, yep, it says a gift from Dana. What are the odds that I would open them back to back? The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Oh my goodness, that's a beautiful cover. Oh my goodness, I love this formatting. The artwork is beautiful and there's not a lot happening on each page, so I think, I think Drennan's the right age for this. Oh, I can already tell I'm gonna love it. Thank you so much. <gasps> no way! Hi Murphy, 112263 is one of my favorite King novels. Not horror, but time travel and what might happen in the course of history if the course of history is altered. After reading, watch the miniseries on Hulu. They did a great job. And then your message is cut off and your name isn't on it. Well, I didn't get your name included because they cut your message off. So whoever sent this to me, 
please let me know. But this is probably the King novel that I anticipate reading the most. I haven't read a lot of King recently, but that's the one that I've been the most excited to get to. So that will be read very soon. Thank you so much. Thrift book, so I know this won't come with a note. The name of this book is Secret. Oh, this is a story about a secret, but it also contains a secret story. Based on formatting, I'm guessing this is a middle grade novel. I, ooh, I'm interested. I don't read a lot of middle grade, but I'm interested because of the title. You can't see Locke, but he's now napping on my lap. Hi Murphy, here is the Princess Academy book that I've been telling you about. I hope you enjoy it, Udi. So this is from the same friend that sent me the Brandon Sanderson book. So he wanted to do a reread of this book and he loves this book. And so he asked me if I had read it and I said no, so he sent it to me. And ah, oh, thank you so much, Udi. Another middle grade. Ooh, I guess I'm gonna be reading some middle grade these days. Okay, this one didn't come with a note. It says, slip this engaging love affair into your beach bag and prepare to get lost in this glittering tale. Huh, well that's the blurb, so let's find out what it's actually about. Okay, it's a historical romance. For three months, this humble fishing village serves as a playground for New York City's wealthy elite. For Beatrice something or other, a college-educated farm girl from rural Pennsylvania, her focus is reconnecting with her banker husband, Harry. Instead, she's spending 12 weeks, uh-oh, sequestered with her, her, with other high society wives at Mantuck Manor, a 200 room seaside hotel while her husband details his extracurricular activities. Oh boy, all right. This is good because I don't read a lot of romance and when I do pick up a romance, I would like it to be something that, you know, has been pre-approved by someone who knows my reading taste. Full disclosure, this makes me nervous because I don't like romances that are based on cheating, even if the author tries to justify the cheating. And that's what it looks like it might be, but I will trust your opinion and I will give it a go the next time I'm in a romance mood. Oh, okay, this is from Christopher. The moon is a harsh mistress and the dispossessed. So this is from Christopher. He emailed me the other day to let me know that these are sci-fi novels to do with AIs and I love, oof, I'm, I'm just really, really getting into sci-fi these days. So I'm excited. Christopher has really good taste too, so far it seems, from what he sent me in the past. Hi Murphy, this is my favorite historical fiction trilogy. Bernard Cornwell is one of my favorite authors. The other is Frederick Bachman. What? There's no Frederick Bachman here. Got me all excited. And this book was my gateway to political war stories. I really hope you like it. Fernanda. Thank you, Fernanda. Oh, the other author you love is Frederick Bachman. I just assumed you sent me a Bachman book, but this is awesome. Actually, The Book of the Unnamed Midwife. I've heard of that, but I don't remember what it's about. I feel like my friend read it and told me not to read it because it was too painful. And The Winter King, I've never heard of. But they are both now in my TBR. My friend, we will see if she was right or wrong about if I should read The Unnamed Midwife. Thank you so much, Fernanda. Love in a Stranger's Eyes. Pure passion, beautiful old-fashioned romance. Thank you again. I really appreciate when you guys send me genres that I don't read enough so that when I'm ready to read in that genre, I know I have good recommendations. What in the world could this possibly be? Sorry, Locke. He's very, he's very unimpressed with the amount of noise I'm making. <laughs> the note said, here's your dice. Let the D&D &D begin. I need to watch that channel now that so many of you guys told me to watch so that I can get into D&D. &D. Oh, Locke thinks the dice are a toy. Thank you, Carlos. I, ooh, I'm excited. That's actually a really amazing gift. I really appreciate that. Hi Murphy, thought you might enjoy this. Please feel free to read it and share it with your friends. And do let me know what you think. I enjoy the feedback, Sam. Cool, so this is a self-pub book. Thank you very much, Sam. Two books by two wonderful Australian children's authors. Aw, says Forge Renan. Oh, well, I'll let him open it. Inspired by two things I know you love. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. For Murphy. And then there's a little letter in here. Dear Murphy, I love your channel. You are the first booktube channel I found and you inspired me to start my own. Thank you, Mel. Channel is a book friend named Mel. Thank you, Mel. My cousin, Rachel. Oh, this is the same author that wrote Rebecca. Orphaned at an early age, Philip Ashley is raised by his benevol benevolent cousin, Amber Rose. Amber Rose is delighted to make Philip his heir 
safe in the knowledge that he will treasure his beautiful Cornish estate. But Philip's world is shattered when Ambrose sets off a trap in Florence. All right, I'm not gonna read anymore because classics usually have way too much information in their description. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. <laughs> it's Peter Pan. This is an amazing gift. Thank you so much, Mel. I actually haven't read any more from this author, even though she wrote a book that I love so much. Oh, cool, Ronald Dahl. So believe it or not, I've never read Ronald Dahl. I did not grow up reading him. Oh, sorry if that angle is different. I had to, the memory card was full. Anyway, I've never read Ronald Dahl uh, growing up or at all, ever, as an adult. So actually, this is, this is awesome. It's an author that I've been meaning to read for a little bit too long. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is another self-pub author that emailed me. Um, he has a novel and then a bunch of novellas and he offered to send them all to me and I told him just send the novel so it doesn't cost him too much and he chose to send me everything instead. Apparently, he's just incredibly generous. So, ooh, and apparently they all come with bookmarks as well. Ethan something or other, a software developer at a video game development studio is about to turn 45. He's unaware that he's a powerful Nephilim who is about to discover a world of magic that he didn't know existed. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you so much, Robert for, oh my goodness, for all of these. Apparently, the tripod got knocked. Anyway, based on formatting, I'm guessing that this is also a middle grade novel. It didn't come with a note, but if you sent it to me, feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much. Okay, last we have Estrada Crate Gift Box. The author actually emailed me and told me that this was coming my way. Apparently, he wrote a book that is featured in this book box and his friend wanted me to read the book, so she bought me the book box so that I could get his book. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a note included that says that all the money that he makes off of his books in the coming months are going towards supporting the humans for Puerto Rico efforts after the recent earthquakes. Okay, so according to his note, these two are his adult series, and he said they include angels, demons, and vampires that don't sparkle. And then this is his, these are his middle grade books, and they come with post-its with little poems. So thank you so much to Emma for giving me this gift of all four of these books, as well as the author for sending along the note and a little bit more information on them. Hey, Drennan. Yeah. You got a present. You wanna open it? Look, it says for Trinan. What is it inside? Well, you'll have to see. Now do it. Open it, open it. <gasps> oh my goodness. You got two books. Look, this one's a puppy. And this one is a puppy. Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Oh, it says possum magic. That's a possum. Awesome. A possum and a puppy. Pig was a pug, and I'm sorry to say, he was greedy and selfish in most every way. Did you like that book? Oh, I want to read the next book. Sure, here you go. Possum Magic, and she did. Which, which, which book was your favorite? This one and this one. Okay, there was another book that came for you too. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it. You wanna read this one too? Yeah. It says, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Just popping back in to say that Jordan and I just read this whole book together. It's now one of my favorite books. I'm giving it five stars, and I'm gonna order copies for my family members and send it to them. This book, was simple enough for a kid to understand. Drennan sat through the whole thing, but so powerful and had me tearing up in multiple places. Please, please, please read this book. This is gonna be on my favorites list now. This book was incredible and adults would get a lot out of it. And I wish I had grown up reading this book because there's so many incredible messages in it. Are you asleep? Did you just fall asleep? No, <laughs> I didn't. This book was incredible. Please read it. Mm -hmm. It'll be linked in the description. Now Drennan wants to read Peter Pan. Peter Pan appeared one night just like a magic spell. So those are the books that I either finished or started this week, as well as the books that I was gifted and the dice for a game that I will hopefully be getting into soon. I'd love to chat with you more about any of these books in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.